Welcome to Row with Controls. Here's your host, Steve Rowe. Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Row with Controls, and I'm your host, Steve Rowe. Our topic today has to do with wireless communication and communication in general. And of course, we're doing this all through the lens of lighting controls. So our topic today, very simply put, is communicating versus networking through the lens of lighting controls. I think this is best displayed and best showed through an image, so I'm actually going to use a whiteboard. Pre-populated some of the information here to help with the conversation. So we're going to start with communicating or how to communicate with. So very simply put, we've got a couple of fixtures here. Let's say they have occupancy daylight sensors, each of them. OK, we've got our light fixture sensor in the bottom in this case. And we have what I would call today's universal remote, a cellular phone. So let's say that we want to communicate with these light fixtures. I'm going to draw a bi-directional arrow in this case. So communicating with can be unidirectional, bi-directional, but you'll see here one device communicating to another device. This is a single peer-to-peer -peer relationship in this case. Why would you want this? Let's take a high bay application, warehouse space. Perhaps I want to change the occupancy time delay or the photo cell daylight harvesting settings or troubleshooting the fixture and get, gathering information from its operation. All reasons you may want this remote device, this universal cell phone remote to communicate with the fixture. Once I'm complete with this, I can sever this connection and I am done communicating. Now I can go and I can communicate with a second fixture if I'd like. But again, peer-to-peer, one-to-one relationship, communicating with as soon as you are done, those no longer persist in communication. And these devices often don't communicate information to one another. So let's move to networking. So similar application, two additional fixtures in this case to represent perhaps that warehouse application space, um, high bay fixtures. Each of them, again, have an occupancy sensor, daylight harvesting sensor, and wireless radio. And then you have that same cell phone participating in this. Now, let's take a look. When you talk about networking, they start to have communication between one another. So in this case, let's show all the devices communicating across a network. So now all of a sudden they're sharing persistent information, therefore a network. Perhaps the cell phone device is also participating in this. Now, why has this become helpful in this application? If all these devices are sharing information, networking together, it now increases the capabilities of the solution. So for example, if you have a person that walks into the space and is seen by the first occupancy sensor here, it can share this information across the network to all the other devices, and you can get things like group response, same with daylight harvesting. Or perhaps I can use a software tool in order to troubleshoot the network and understand how the network is operating. So it's important that this is a network because these devices continuously communicate and share this information, and therefore you unlock that additional capability. Furthermore, you could add more and layer more information and you can actually implement uh, communication strategies where these devices network not only to each other, but also to other building systems um, through gateways and controller devices. So I hope this helps identify the difference between communicating and networking. Tune in next time for our next topic with Row with Controls. Thank you very much. <laughs>